compressor won't start, what do you do? If the compressor's in an overload, how do you check it with your meter? Looking at the schematic, how's the compressor wired up? Today on Tips for Technicians, I am Tad. If you want to learn more about being a technician in the HVAC industry, check out more of my videos on HVAC Tips for Technicians. That's a playlist I have. If you want to join and support my channel and help me grow, click the Join button and I'll send you some free guides and I'll help you with your career. Let's go ahead and get started with today's video and definitely leave those comments down there in the comment section, those questions that you have, and I'll try to make content to help you. All right, let's get started. So you show up to the job. This is a split system. This is the outdoor unit. The compressor is inside and the bottom, and it won't start because it's in an overload. What does that mean? It got really hot. And there are three wires because this is a single phase compressor. We have these three wires, and we have black, which is common. That's a common winding. Then we have red, which is the run winding. And then we have the yellow wire, which goes to the hermetic terminal of that capacitor, which we'll talk about that in a minute. But this right here is commonly referred to as the start winding. This is the winding that drops out after the compressor has started. And you pull locked rotor amps when you start, which is about six times that of run load amps, okay? Now, show it up to the job. Capacitor's bad. How do I know it's bad? I check microfarads. I got a video on that, but I'll do that real quick for you. It's a 40 slash 5, okay? Now, usually you see the top of it swelled up. It's not, and it should be registering 40 plus 5. That means if you check it from hermetic to common, you should have 40 microfarads. And then if you check it from common to fan terminal, you should have 5, okay? Because it's a 40 slash 5, okay? 40 microfarads from common to herm, but you didn't have that, okay? Now we go to microfarads, oh, come on, microfarads right there. We take our two meter leads, all right, and we go from common to hermetic, okay? Just like that right there. And did we get 40? No, we, did, we didn't, we got 27, okay? So this capacitor is bad. Now what I did was I put a new capacitor on. We'll talk about the wiring in just a minute. And I also put a hard start kit on, which is gonna help this compressor to start. But what I did was I went ahead and checked the windings because I figured when I come up to the job and all there is is the outdoor fan running, which I'll show you that in a minute, and your suction line, which is your vapor line, was not cool, nice and cold, sweating, that means the compressor is not running. If you put a set of gauges on this, your pressures will be equalized. And this right here is your liquid line. So this is your high side gauge and go right here, low side gauge. You wanna know more about charging? Definitely check out my video. It's about superheat and subcooling and how to charge, okay? So let's go ahead and check the windings. First, I wanna show you the schematic. Then we're gonna use our meter and show you what the meter or the compressor will read, the windings will read when it's in an overload. An overload means it has an overload device and when the compressor gets so hot, then it opens up and then the circuit to the compressor is open. So from some of those, some of those windings are not gonna read a resistance. They're gonna read OL, okay? And that's what you're gonna find out. So let's go ahead and look at this command. Talk about how this is wired. The more information you have, the better you are. So modern refrigeration and air conditioning. I want to show you a picture of a thermal overload. This thermal overload is mounted to the shell of the compressor. It's connected in series with the compressor's common wire. It opens the circuit when it senses dangerously high temperature. And you can see right here, that right there is the common winding. This thing right here is going to be wired in series. And it's a compressor protection device. So I want you to know more about this. This is page 459 of the Modern Air Conditioning and Refrigeration book. Check this out if you don't have it. So if you find over here component code, it says compressor should be COMP. You go over here, you find compressor, COMP, and you have your common, your start, and your run. And you can see something right there that breaks the circuit. Black is common. Yellow goes to the start. So that's the start winding. Black is the common winding, and red is the run winding. Okay? Compressor has three wires, and if you trace these wires up here, you have well, the red wire going to T2, which is the loads side of the contactor, 
and then black going to T1, which is the load side of the contactor. This is the line side of the contactor and the load side, which I'll show you in just a second. And then that yellow wire was in the middle and it goes up here to the hermetic side of the capacitor. This is the capacitor. Fan terminal, brown wire goes to the fan. See that? Brown, and then you've got red or purple and then a black that goes to your fan as well. All right, let's look at this real quick. So the red and the black wire here would go to my load side of my contactor right there beside that other red and black. And then this is your line side of your contactor where your power is coming in. All right, let's take the meter here and let's switch it from microfarads to ohms, okay? So now that we're on ohms, I'm gonna put the meter down here so you guys can see and we are going to start checking. 1.6. Red to black is 1.6. All right, now I'm gonna check the black to the start. 1.8. All right. And then I'm gonna check the red to the start 3.1 and then what do we do do we do black to start black to start 2.2 so now it's no longer in an overload since i got in here i've put the new capacitor on it's no longer an overload so we didn't have ol from one winding to the other all the windings added up to one measurement. I think it was 2.2, 1.1, then 3.1, which adds up to 3.1 or just about 3.1. That means that our windings are good. Now, let's go ahead and wire this back up, turn it back on, and the yellow wire goes to the hermetic terminal. Also, the hard start kit, the way it wires up is only got two wires. One goes across to the common, okay, right here, it says C and then the other one goes to the hermetic and this basically has a potential relay in it and it drops the start winding out after the compressor starts all right now hooking the common and run winding up okay all that's hooked up there capacitor is hooked up so you may need to put your meter on amps select it this is a sc440 field piece and i'm just going to take my clamp and put it on that start winding there and i'm going to turn the breaker on you're going to get to see the amps that this compressor pulls when it starts up because it's no longer an overload ready looks like four amps but it didn't start uh-oh. Looks like the compressor didn't start. No longer reading OL, but uh, we still, we got an issue here. Compressor is not starting. So we may have a bad compressor. We put on a hard start kit. We put on a good capacitor. We took the old capacitor off. If the compressor was in an overload, what you would want to do is you want, would want to cool it down. So you'd want to get a water hose, turn the power off, maybe take the top off of the unit and trickle some water on there. I've actually, I've gotten ice, bags of ice and put on the compressors. Whatever you can do to get the overload situation gone because overload is going to mean that you have the broken circuit. Usually it's a bimetal on the dome of the compressor. And when it heats up, it basically opens a set of contacts that opens the circuit of one of the windings of the compressor and usually it causes the compressor to no longer be energized so that it can cool down and sometimes this can take up to 30 minutes to an hour you can speed that up with a water hose and then maybe your compressor is good still this one the windings they add up somewhat and you know we check the windings there and that's how you check them but sometimes your compressor is bad and sometimes you have to get a new compressor so what I'll do is I'll probably wait maybe another 10, 15 minutes, turn it back off, cool it down some more, and then hopefully it'll start back up. So make sure you know how to use your meter. We're checking amps still. 
Let's check our amps for our outdoor fan. 0.5 amps. Okay, good. Turn it on volts AC, because this is 230 volts. Check your incoming power. 248 volts. And then check your power across the contactor, making sure that you have voltage. 248 volts. So we got voltage going to that compressor and the windings are no longer reading open. Earlier they were, and I wish I had got that on video so you guys could have actually seen that on the meter, OL. When you have an OL in between common or run or run or start, that means that your compressor is overheated. It is in an overload. And if you actually take the top off your unit and you feel the compressor, it's gonna be really hot. Okay. Woo, this thing is hot. Make sure your plug is good make sure you check it at the compressor sometimes you can have a plug or harness that's bad or the wiring could be bad so it could be cut in half it could be touching something so it could be shorted somewhere so make sure you check at the compressor for an accurate reading okay now let's talk about what causes a compressor overload so a couple things can cause a compressor overload. It could be to do with airflow. It could be to do with a restriction, maybe the TXV, the filter dryer. It could be to do with refrigerant. If you don't have the right refrigerant levels, that can cause a compressor overload. Also, you could have a bad capacitor. You could have a bad fan motor. So it's not just one thing. You need to check a lot of different things just to make sure that you have the right process of elimination to be able to know exactly what it is because there's cause and effect so make sure you know how to diagnose and you're checking all the possibilities got the meter set to ohms we're going to do a check on the compressor windings at the compressor 3.3 oh jumping around 1.6 and 1.7 Okay, so our compressor is not starting. This could be a mechanical failure. So we, we, don't, we don't have an open winding now. So we've got a good, clean circuit to energize inside that motor. So now we have to rule it down to it's probably a bad mechanical scroll. It's probably stuck. I don't hear any trying to start any mm, no sound so yeah we probably have a mechanical failure here so it could be a mechanical it could be a short if it's a short then all the windings are going to read to ground or one of the windings is going to read to ground i'll show you how to do that so you'll take your meter you'll leave it on ohms all right and set it here and then we're going to check from ground which the best place would be probably some of this copper here and then we check to each winding. And it should say OL. Okay, if it's shorted to ground, any of these windings are shorted to ground, which would cause the breaker to immediately trip, you would have some type of reading like this. Okay, so it's not shorted to ground. All the windings are reading good. That means, and they're not OL. That means it's not hot anymore. It's not in an overload. So we're getting voltage now to that compressor. We made sure our plug, our wire harness is good. So we have a mechanically failed compressor. Now we'll get model and serial number on the equipment, get a price on the compressor, and then give them a price on an outdoor unit. Got another unit, just got here. I noticed the compressor is not running. It's in an overload. I've already measured the resistance and the windings by using my meter. I'm gonna show you how it reads when the compressor's in an overload. Now, I've already removed the common and the run winding from the load side of the contactor. And then this is our start. Let's clamp on our meter with these alligator clamps here. And then we're gonna put it on ohms. So it's on ohms there. Then I'm gonna show you how I cool this compressor down and get it running again. All right, meter's hooked up. Ohms reading from the run winding to the common winding and it's OL. Now it shouldn't be reading that. Earlier we were reading the resistance. Now we're not reading any resistance on the windings. So this is typical when your thermal protection for your compressor is open. So let's get this thing cooled down and then we'll read the windings again once it's cooled down. So I use a water hose. 
if you've got water available take a water hose put it in the unit secure it so that you can drip water over the compressor to cool it down and eventually that motor is going to start reading resistance again like it's like it's doing right now good job here we go all right make sure you use your meter to check from each winding to ground as well making sure it's not shorted to ground of course if it was shorted to ground it would most likely be tripping the breaker inside so got this wire and I'm checking oh wow I am reading the ground uh oh that's not good so what do we have here no refrigerant we have a leak and that means that this is the cause for the compressor having an issue so now I'm inspecting the plug and making sure that it's not burnt inspecting the compressor a little bit more try to figure out what's going on definitely gonna try to nitrogen pressure test find the leak it's probably in the outdoor coil because it's completely empty so it's probably a high pressure leak and let's go ahead and see if this thing will start back up just curious Wow you hear that compressor running Wow it's actually pumping I can't believe that Wow I did a quick vacuum on it I pumped with nitrogen couldn't find a leak but I know it's in the outdoor coil because I've got visible oil and I can feel it it's in the bottom there so definitely got a leak in the outdoor coil now I'm adding refrigerant again to get it going temporarily until we can get the part in get the outdoor coil in and get it replaced definitely make sure that you know what you're doing and if you don't Ask me a question below and I'll try to help you. This is Tad reminding you, I will keep you cool if you let me.